So, um, so we were really kind of doing some thinking about, again, all the things I just mentioned are obviously also powerful platforms, but it felt like we kind of left something on the table, something, something still important. We started to think about what are ways that brands can realistically um, still play a part in some of this content that's being created um, with a lot of passion by, by um, regular people like you and me. So we kind of had a couple of rules as we started to think through this. The first one is to facilitate what they already do. So don't go out and try to force them to do something they're not already doing. They're not necessarily looking for their next assignment. They are just naturally putting up whatever they want to put up. And we felt like there was, there was a way that brands can um, add to that, right? Brands have money. They've got resources, they've got knowledge that other people don't have. Um, they certainly have abilities to make things happen. So we felt like there is a role that brands can realistically play here. We just need to figure out what that is, and part of it is certainly around helping people. Um, also, the, this interesting dance between certainly being personal, we all know social media is a different space, and you can't just talk in sort of a very, um, uh, that same sort of, you know, dictating way that we did on television. Um, but at the same time, recognize your role as a brand, right? There, there certainly were also some shady lines in terms of if you suddenly aren't disclosing who you are, or if you just try to be one of the guys on a, on a forum board, for example, it can still be a little false. So certainly still acknowledge who you are and play your role as a brand. That actually can be a very welcome role in a lot of spaces and in a lot of um, environments. Um, and then the third one should be an obvious one, which is no hard selling, not obviously in an environment like this. So as we started to think about those, those rules, we said, what seems to be realistic roles that we can play? Um, the first one is to do it yourself, and this is the one that I would actually say, um, for those brands who are truly engaging, a lot of them are probably doing the best. They start their own blog, they have their own conversations in places, they create forums, um, either in a B2B context, or um, if there is really a strong fan base where people can kind of talk to each other and get support. That seems to be going pretty well, um, but again, that, that, it, it, that sort of felt to us like, well, there's a lot of um, rich territory there. It's also something where it's still kind of the brand just talking about the brand instead of maybe connecting it to a larger base of you know, passions. The second is to sponsor something. This, again, is uh, it's probably the easiest approach to first get involved. Find something meaningful that people are doing out there and just find a way to sponsor it. Probably the easiest one there are, you know, a lot of the, the sponsoring bloggers, right? A lot of people who just do a lot of blog advertising actually support some bloggers. Let those bloggers continue to do what they're doing, not sort of force them to write about your brand, but kind of sponsor that endeavor and, and get credit that way. And then it seemed like there was a third one that we hadn't at least seen too many people talking about, which is this idea of curating this long tail of content, right? So there is a ton of content out there now, um, but there's no real way to figure out, to figure your way through it. So to use Kat's example, if you do love shoes, lots of people are writing reviews of shoes and posting great videos of shoes um, and, and blogging with a lot of passion around it, but a, a single Google search doesn't necessarily get you to the best stuff. It just gets you through their algorithm to some stuff that's been viewed a number of times, but what we found was a lot of great stuff was slipping through the cracks, whatever the topic happened to be. So we felt like curating was interesting because it solved a problem each for brands and for consumers. For brands, it's a way to really play the role of a brand and bring those resources. We will put time, money, whatever it takes, visibility into finding you the stuff you want and then being able to connect to it. And that's the role that we will play. We're not asking you to write new stuff. We're not asking you to specifically mention our brand. But you will recognize us as a curator. We are an authority in whatever space we're playing, assuming you're curating content in a place that makes sense for you. So if you're a shoe brand and you're curating shoe content, that seems like a natural role for you to play. You clearly know a lot about shoes. Um, and then for consumers, it again solves this problem that, you know, as much as we think Google sometimes solves everything, every problem in the world, um, it often doesn't help us find the very best content we're looking for. And, and that's a role that brands can actually play. Um, and th this is just something, again, I don't have the AV today, sorry, but if you go to the Onion News Network, um, a fantastic video about um, YouTube holding a contest to actually find the first good video, um, announcing that they'll give $100,000 to someone who actually makes something that is watchable all the way through. And I think, I think that points to the problem, which is, um, I'm going to show you Purina in a minute, but people love cute and funny and, and um, amazing videos around dogs and cats. If you go to YouTube and type in dog, what you are going to get back is, with no guarantee, going to be some of the most amazing stuff around dogs. It's going to be some sort of a, a grab bag where some of the stuff might be very, very good, and then a lot of the stuff is going to be the dog chasing its own tail, which is always three minutes long and everybody thinks it's fascinating. Um, so, 
can someone kind of take a shortcut and sort of help? So that's exactly what we did for Purina, is we basically said there is a load of content out there. This top left one is a technorati chart that I think shows an average of sort of 20,000 blog posts a day that mention dog or cat. Now, obviously, all of those aren't specifically pet-focused, but a lot of them are. So people every single day are talking about this stuff. Um, and I can't read the numbers from here, but basically, you've got uh, Flickr in, I think, like tens of thousands or something, and, uh, and YouTube well over a million in terms of photos that are tagged with pet, cats, dog, cat, those types of things. So the content's there, but for, for a, an average person, there's sort of no great way to find that stuff. And do people want to find it? Absolutely. Um, go look at YouTube on, uh, sorry, uh, Yahoo on any given day. In terms of the most emailed photos, one, two, three of the top five always, every single day are always the cute animal shots, right? So this is something where it's a break for people. It's, it's a way for animal lovers to just take a minute out of their day and kind of look at this stuff. They're clearly looking for this kind of content. Uh, and no one out there was, was sort of facilitating it. At the same time, Purina had, at this time, at least 16 different websites, um, you know, for a lot of their different brands and stuff. But the pressure to keep churning out new content was severe for them, and the cost was astronomical in terms of they continued to go and shoot new video and, and build new sites and pay bloggers and stuff like that. And they were wrestling with how do we keep, as we called it, feeding the beast, coming up with content that pe these people were willing to consume. Um, so what we realized was there already was a lot of great content, people couldn't find it, and that the role that Purina could play is to actually match those together. We decided there were five steps to curating after kind of thinking this through and stumbling our way through it. Um, the first is aggregation, which is really to decide all the sources you're going to use, understand where it is, bring it in um, to one place. Then the second is curating, which is the actual act of deciding what's good enough to make the cut and what's bad enough. It's clearly, if this was just an unfiltered feed, that did nothing. Then Purina is just kind of throwing a lot of stuff, some of which might be controversial, some of which might just be terrible, um, out at people. And so the goal here was we had to take that step of actually selecting the best stuff. Um, organization was the third in terms of how are we going to bring all this in, what does legal need to see, how are we going to filter out things that don't make sense, um, and, and sort of go through all of that. For this presentation, which is then how do you present that to people? Um, how, do we, how do we make this look? Um, is there a role that sort of the person who's viewing through this can kind of take part in it as well? Um, can they participate as well? And then the fifth is adaptation. Um, just by chance, they all happen to rhyme once we figured out the five steps. Um, and that fifth one is literally, as you start to learn how people are using this tool, and what they like and what they don't like and what they're doing, um, how can we continue to make it more effective? What we have to come up with in the case of Purina was something called the Pet Charts. Um, and it's actually still live at PetCharts.com. It, um, it's updated daily, so every single day it finds what Purina considers to be the, the top photos, videos, and um, either blog posts or articles on the web that day having to do with your dog or your cat. And you can actually sort it by just dog, just cat, because those two rarely mix. It's, there's a lot of tension there. Um, or, you, or you can look at a mixed feed between dogs and cats. Um, it's simple. It's meant to, you're meant to use sort of five minutes a day to, to show up there. Um, and what it does is goes out and finds people who are literally already doing what they love to do, posting either their photo or their video or, or a post um, that can either be about nutrition or just reminiscing about um, their cat Fluffy who's moved on or whatever it is. It can be this, this really interesting mix every single day. Um, and you can actually vote dig style on it as well. So as a, as a um, viewer or as an audience member of this site, you can actually come in and start to do some input as well, um, which of course tells us what kind of content is getting better rankings and what kind of content isn't, so that we can adjust over time and of course like you have some really rich data.